Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at my generic strength build for PvP. So this build is what I use just for ladder, although I did make it in vanilla today and I was testing it out in arena. No, I didn't gain anything new from this, but it is nice to have a dedicated PvP build as my other builds are PvE builds or I will delete them after I do a PvP video on them. To start off with, it is a very diverse build designed for hard swapping weapons. We'll get into the full inventory a little bit later, but let me go over the stats first. For the stats, 60 Vigor, that's the Vigor soft cap. 34 Endurance is so I can wield a variety of weapons, talismans, and armor setups, and still be able to reach 88 and 109 poise, depending if I use Bulgot's Talisman. The heaviest setup I have is Power Stand Short Spears, with Ritual Sword, Ritual Shield, and then 88 Poise. For Strength, I have 53. Ideally, you would want 54 due to the two-hand soft cap, which will bring you to 80 Strength. However, 53 is good enough. Instead, I got 22 Dexterity, so I can wield Nagakiba, and have better scaling on some of my quality weapons that I have, such as Commander Standard. My main setup that I like to use is Power Saint Short Spears, as well as Commander Standard and Roger's Rapier. Now keep in mind that all of the weapons and Ash of War setups I have on this build are ladder legal. For the Crystal Tier and for the Great Rune, Opaline Hard Tier, Crimson Bubble Tier, that's your go-to for PvP, and Morgoth's Great Rune. There's really no reason to use anything else because any other tier or Great Rune combination will have you lose survivability, which is the most important thing in PvP. For the Talismans, the main ones I rock are Urtree's Favor, Crimson Amber Medallion, Ritual Shield, and Sword Talisman if I'm going 88 poise. Otherwise, if I'm going 109, I have Urtree's Favor, Crimson Amber, Great Jar's Arsenal, and then Bullgoat's Talisman. Due to the ladder rule set, you cannot have Godson Swaddling Cloth in a power stance setup. You cannot have Blessed Dew Talisman, Blue Feather Branch Sword, or Red Feather Branch Sword equipped at the same time. You have to have one of those. So that does limit some of my Talisman setups. For the weapons, I have Short Spear for power stancing with the Flaming Strike Ash of War. Short Spear, obviously I've covered in depth, and Flaming Strike is to cover some of the weaknesses to have that quick attack that lingers and that can combo. Short Spears don't really have any combos outside of Flaming Strike, so it's just to help augment that. Cinqueta is obviously a very good strength dagger. A little short, but all daggers are. And it has good damage, so it's good. It doesn't have the good Erdsteel Dagger R2 moveset. For Great Swords, I have the Knight's Great Sword and the Claymore. Claymore, I have Impaling Thrust on. Piercing Fang is technically better but I prefer Impaling Thrust because it's faster and I can combo off of the Crouch R1, the R2, to Roll Catch. And then Knight's Great Sword, obviously there's lots of videos on how to use it properly, but it does have a lot of combos from standing R1s to jumping R1s to charged R2s that will allow Piercing Fang to hit as a pseudo combo. And a pseudo combo, if you don't know, is when you roll out of an attack, just tap roll right away out of hit stun, it will catch that roll. Next up, I have the Godskin Stitcher. It is a heavy thrusting sword, so it's seen better days, obviously. But the running R2 is good, the jumping R1 is good. And then I have the Stormblade Ash of War, and that is going to help combo attacks. So it's very good. Shamshir, obviously I don't have it in this clip, but Shamshir with Rot, very good, very meta. Spinning Slash is also very good for in any fast weapon will combo into itself. So you can hit the first part of the weapon art and it'll combo into the full weapon art. And Shamshir overall just very good for aggressing and it plays similarly to the Pontata Curved Sword in Dark Souls 3. Then we have the Bandit's Curved Sword. It's Power Stance Curved Sword with Frost. It's pretty good. Chilling Mist obviously applies frost to your weapon, and Power Stance Curve Sword moveset 
isn't as good as Power Stand Straight Sword, which is probably good because the running attack is a lot better. Dismounter has, again, fallen from grace. It used to be a good off-meta way to counter some setups. In 1.09, using Dismounter and Dagger or Thrusting Sword. Now that Patch 1.1 is out, using it with a Thrusting Sword isn't as good. The two-hand moveset is better since you get Hyper Armor. And it's still pretty good at comboing. Godskin Peeler, I have Barbaric Roar on it. The Running, R2, very good. The rest of the moveset is kind of eh, but with Barbaric Roar we get really fast Hyper Armor and it combos into itself if you use the R2. We have Nagakiba, obviously, uh, since ladder rule set. Spinning Slash is banned, so I put on Sheath on there. Dual Katana is very solid. You have bits of aggression that you can get off, but mostly it's a very passive setup. The Stone Club is the Hyper Armor version of Shamshir, basically. And with Barbaric Roar, you also get that R2 that has insane Hyper Armor on it and that combos into itself. It plays like a reinforced club in Dark Souls 3. Very solid moveset, very solid weapon. That's only for the buff. That's only for the passive for the Barbaric Roar. Otherwise, you don't need it. Dual Lance, obviously a very good setup. Not as good as it once was. And I feel like Katanas have kind of become even with the Lance if you're going to use that kind of setup where you're using jumping attacks and then crouched attacks. And I would honestly prefer Nagakiba because you can have just a better setup overall. However, Lance is still good. It has higher damage than Nagakiba. Then I have the Grave Slythe with Loretta's Slash. I'm not 100% on Loretta's Slash. I was able to land it pretty consistently, comboing from a crouch attack, but I'm undecided on Scythe's. I feel like there is some potential there, especially on the Occult Infusion. Outside of that, the Scythes are pretty bad. You have the Crouching Attack that has some weird active frames. Then we have the Katar. The Katar has Barbaric Roar and it's... You can play aggressively with it. It also is pretty good passively as well. The Running Attack is obviously very good for aggression. And any aggression the opponent puts on you, you can just counter that with a barbaric roar. There's not much to say about it. I have Raptor Talons. Obviously the running R2 combos into an R2 and an R2 combos into another R2. It's a weapon. I, it's not as good as Katar, but people seem to like it, especially on a Cult of Fusion, so I decided to slap it on this build. Then I got Warped Axe with Craig Blade. Very good. If your opponent doesn't know, the Warped Axe has a unique R1 chain in which that the second R1 is very good backswing on it and can punish attacks pretty well. It's not going to consistently hit both R1s but you can sometimes get off an R1 and the backswing is fast enough to get another R1 off before they roll. 